So let's assume you're thinking about making your very own drum sample pack and you're curious as to what really goes into making it, how long does it take, how hard is it? Well, I spent the last several months working on my very own drum sample pack. It came out last week. It's called the Studio Kit. If you wanna check it out, there's a link below. I'm gonna show you everything that I did to make this drum sample pack so that one, you can just see what went in it, but two, if maybe you wanna make your own sample pack, maybe this will be helpful to you. If you can think of it as like a mini course or something like that. Yeah, go check it out. If you wanna pick it up, you can sort of use it as a visual and audio guide as I go through these steps and uh, also great samples, one shots and loops in there. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you all of the stuff that's going in there. And I thought going in like, this is gonna be pretty easy. Like I love getting drum sounds. I love playing drums. I love recording drums. Perfect. Took a little longer than I thought. <laughs> Now, before we get into this, make sure you watch to the very end. Thanks to our friends at Sweetwater. Anyone who bought the pack in the first week was eligible to win a giveaway. So if you bought the pack in the first week, I'm going to pick your name. And so I'm going to say it at the very end of the video and check your email because I will be hitting you up. Also, on that note, if you ever see comments down in the comment section of any of my video, that appear to be me telling you, congratulations, you won something, please message me on Telegram. That is not me. That is a scam. Please pay attention to the account commenting. It never says my name. It had, they take my account picture and then they put like, hit me up on Telegram or something. That's not me. Please don't send them money. Those are scams. I will never comment and just randomly tell you you won something. I will reach out to you personally, which is what's gonna happen. So make sure you watch to the very end. So thinking about coming up with a drum sample pack was exciting. And the first element of doing it was really coming up with a solid plan, picking a location, picking out what's going to be in the sample pack, um, picking out which drums you're gonna use or the sounds you're gonna get, all that stuff is a big part of the process. So the first thing that I did was I picked the location. Now I have a epic home studio. I, if I could humbly say so myself, I have a fairly epic home studio. I have um, all of my favorite gear and all of my favorite drums and stuff. So I thought it would be a fun exercise to get like the best drum sounds I can get in my space as samples and then make loops of things that would be useful to me. It's gonna be great to be able to use my favorite drums in the drum sounds that I like to get. So that it was really an exercise of like, let's get all of my favorite things. So I picked my home studio. Up next was picking the drums. What are gonna be the samples that I am most likely to use, right? Cause that's what really matters. I'm thinking about myself as a user. What's going to be the most valuable to me that I'm gonna reach, reach for every time. It would be the epitome of what a studio kit would sound like. To me, a studio drum kit is a very special sounding thing that I sort of have built-in expectations. I've been, I've worked in studios so long and I've recorded drums a billion trillion times. You can fact check me. I, there's a sound that just works in the studio. Basically, I ordered the kit that I expect to get the right sounds from WFL3 drums, which is what you see behind me here. And they sound glorious. So after you select the drums, then comes all of the fun stuff like picking out the right heads, the tuning, the dampening, getting the exact feel and tone and resonance from the drums that you want when you have mics on them in the studio. So as far as the drum heads go on the snare, I actually used the head that came with the bell bass, which is a Gretsch Permatone head. It's kind of like a controlled sound, um, Remo head. It's got like the dot in the middle and I just tuned it as low as I could to get that deep douche sort of sound that just I love. On the toms I use Remo Emperors and on the kick drum, funny enough, I used two heads, one in the beginning and then later switched it. We'll come back to this later. But on the kick drum, I wound up going with a Remo Power Stroke Clear 
batter head and that one just sounded absolutely amazing shout out to jake reed for recommendations on the drum heads jake reed's channel amazing he has a great sample pack as well okay now dampening was very important when it comes to the recording process i tried a bunch of different things because i really wanted to nail this snare sound so i did some gaffers tape and then i even taped like a paper towel folded over like hanging off on top of that i used some some of these uh big fat snare drum rings. Now, if you haven't used any of the big, big fat snare drum stuff, get you some. They have a bunch of different ways to dampen your drums and every single one that you use literally changes the sound of the entire drum immediately. You pop it on, pop it off, it's boom, different drum sound. What I wound up using was the big fat snare drum ring like this. And it's got kind of like a fabric feel on the uh, bottom that sits on the head and then this part has like a plastic on top. I loved just how much it controlled the resonance and the ring, and it just sounded freaking awesome with the mics on it. So that's how I dampened the snare and the toms. Toms, I used the gaffer's tape. Planning what goes into the pack, whether it's a drum sample, of course there's gonna be drum samples, right? But maybe you also put some one shots in there, and then how you do the drum samples, how I did them, there's folders of each drum, and then inside the folder of the drum, there is immediately available pre-mixed one shots at different velocities. So you just grab kick drum, snare drum, you've got a handful of different velocities of hits that are just pre-mixed into a stereo wave file that you drag in, throw it into battery, drag it into trigger, whatever you're using your drum samples with, and it's ready to go. You can hear it, it sounds awesome. But if you wanna go deeper, I also added subfolders that have each one of the velocities as the folder name. And then when you go inside of the subfolder, you actually get drum samples of every single mic that were used at that velocity. So if you are so inclined and you're, let's say you're using the trigger plugin for drum sampling and replacement blending in your mix, you can grab the perfect velocity, let's say velocity five, and you grab that and you can take every single mic and drag it into a slot on trigger and you can have your own blend and mix it however you want. Maybe you want some louder room mics, maybe you want the far room mic really loud, or maybe you want it really dead and you just want the snare top or something like that. With it laid out like this, you have that flexibility to be able to do whatever you want with the drum samples. Or if you just wanna go fast, you grab that one shot of each drum. So that was a big part of my planning process. And then the last part of planning the pack was the drum loops. Uh, I wanted to cover enough ground so that if I was writing a track, there's gonna be loops in there that I are gonna be useful to me. And it's not just gonna be me playing something, it's gonna be like uh, me playing something in a bunch of different varieties. Maybe it's kick, snare, hat, closed. Maybe it's like loud cymbals, kicks and snares or open hats or like tom patterns. If you wanted to make a track with just a very simple kick and snare loop, you can use that and build whatever you want on top of it. I also did loops of the cymbals only. So there's like tracks where it's just the ride riding, there's crashes, and then also there's hi-hat loops. I tried to make the loops, samples, and one shots as useful as absolutely possible. All right, up next, it's time to plan which microphones and which gear that you want to use on your drum samples. So basically, I spent five or six weeks coming up here every single day and just playing drums and recording drums. Now, I have a typical setup that I like when I'm tracking. I was using that when I started. And then as the days went by, I would tweak very small things. I would tweak the placement of a mic or the placement of the overheads. I would make the slightest changes just to get little bits of improvement every single day. And I did that literally for five or six weeks. And along that process, I wound up swapping out different mics and trying different mics just to say like, hey, what happens if I use a large diaphragm tube mic on my snare top? Greg Kohler does it and it sounds unbelievable. So I, hilariously, that's what I wound up going with. Wound up using the Biodynamic M88 on kick in the Warm Audio FET 47 on Kickout, which was such a massive part of the kick drum sound. Sounds so good. Snare top, I used the Mojave MA300 tube large diaphragm condenser on snare top. And then on snare bottom, I used the Biodynamic M201, which is a fantastic dynamic mic. 
Tom's AKG 14s. They sounded very big. Overheads, I used AEA N8 ribbon mics and actually wound up going back to the Blum line position, which is the same ribbons in the same position as the R88 from AEA. Hi-hat, I use SM7. Crotch mic, I used a mic from, I believe it's Honer, an SE Honer mic, and it's called the Harp Blaster. Then, mono drum room mic. I used the Soyuz 017 FET, which is so good. It sounds absolutely amazing. That mic just rocks on everything. Wide rooms. I wound up going with Lewitt 440 Pures, which are large diaphragm condensers. Those mics just sounded awesome. They sounded huge and clean and just beautiful. It wound up later in the process adding another room mic. Pay attention here. So we got all the closed mics, crotch mic, hi-hat, mono room, wide rooms, and then I added a far room mic, which behind me I have a stairwell. And so I added a far room mono mic, which is an SM57. Had to use one. It's the perfect mic for that position because the frequency range is not competing with anything else in the drum mix, so it cuts right through. So those are the mics that I landed on when I was going through this process of getting sounds. I'll tell you about the mic pre's. The, the mic pre's are another massive part of the sounds, and I am such a huge fan of using external mic pre's when it's possible. Here's what I went with. Kick drum, snare top and bottom, rack tom, floor tom, wide rooms, hi-hat, and far room, I went with the Warm Audio 73 mic pre's. That's their, their take on the Neve 1073. On mono drum room and on hi-hat, funny enough, I used the Rupert Neve 5211 mic pre's with the Silk Moda on texture all the way up. And then on the overheads, I, I got this new stereo mic pre, which I'm so pumped about, and it's from AEA. Now, if you remember, the overheads that I used are the AEA N8s. So I wound up using their AEA RPQ2 uh, mic pre's. Now, as far as the other parts of the chain, I used uh, Universal Audio 1176 on the Soyuz Fed. 017 microphone, which is the mono room. I had some compression on that, which sounded really good. And then I used the Warm Audio 1176 on the far room, and I pumped that thing, and I got it, it just sounded, it sounds so fun. It's got a lot of energy, so when you want that, that's what that mic's for. You want it to just, you know, pump. So during the duration of tracking all the samples, all the one shots, and all of the drum loops, I had all of this gear in the signal path engaged at the same settings. So that was a very important part of this whole process was not touching anything and keeping it. Once I got that magic gain staging and EQ and compression, don't touch it. So as far as the mics, gear, getting the sounds, that's how I went about it and that's what I used. But taking the time to select the right microphones, the right gears in the right position is so important to getting those sounds, especially if you're gonna do something that you plan on using as a sample. So I, I spent a ton of time on that. Next, what I did was I did a test round of making the samples, one shots, and loops. I basically wanted to complete the process of, all right, uh, let's make each drum sample, let's record it in, let's get the levels, let's edit it, and let's export it, organize it how it will be when it's done so I understand what this whole process is like. And I did that and I went through it and listened to them and kind of gathered my thoughts. I even sent them to a couple people. Um, I sent a pack to my friend Jeff Giuliano, who is an incredible mixer, like huge successful mixer. He's done like Dan and Shay and Justin Bieber and a bunch of other credits. Forgive me, Jeff, for not having the list here, but he is, I, I trust his ears. And he actually uh, sent me a DM on Instagram and said, just use your bell brass sample on a Brad Paisley single. And I was like, whoa, that's cool. And that was like the, the version one, just my test round. So after Jeff said that to me, I was, I had a lot more confidence and I was very excited about it. So I made a few more adjustments and then I just went through and I committed, I did the final process. But going through that test round of actually completing it, exporting it and see how it goes. And then you kind of go, okay, I understand how this is gonna be. Let's do this for real now. That was very huge. 
so I completed the process I went through, I made the drum samples. Really the most intimidating part of this whole process for me was the loops because I was like, man, I'm gonna have to make so many loops and how am I gonna come up with that many parts and is it gonna be any good? And I, I was really in my head about it, but I just had to start. So I, I started with a tempo, I think I started at 120 and I just started making some loops. Very quickly I realized there's gonna be a lot of loops here. I broke it down, I charted it all out, and I picked the, the tempos that I thought were gonna be the most useful. I actually went through and made a playlist of songs that I love the drum beats and I love the drum performances. I made a playlist of that and then I figured out the tempos and I made sure that those tempos were on there. There's like some 21 Pilots, some Bruno Mars, some Billie Eilish, some Dua Lipa. Uh, some rock stuff in there. So I, I just picked stuff that really hit me as a drummer that I thought would be very useful. And I would use that as a starting ground when I did each tempo. I wound up coming out with like 605 drum loops in the pack, give or take. I don't remember the exact number, but it's, it's over 600 and it was, it was a lot. Tracking them was one thing, keeping tabs. I had a, a notepad where I was checking off each section for each tempo that I did because it becomes very quickly overwhelming with how much you've done and you got to kind of break it up like I would track a part and I'd literally stop right then and there and I would separate the section and I would make sure that it was four bars and then I would go through and I'd color coordinate all the clips uh, so I would know if they were edited yet or not edited yet and I had markers of every tempo and every category of every tempo it was it was madness and then of course you get to edit. I wanted these to be you drag and drop and it locks right into the grid and it's in phase with whatever other drums you might have. This was a, the probably the most grueling process of the entire thing. I have a kid and I have a family and I'm making these videos. So I was squeezing all of this in somewhere in the day and I'd come up and I'd play a bunch of parts and then I would just sit down and I would edit. I would edit whatever I just tracked or as much of it that I could and it took forever. I would play something and I'd edit it and I'd listen to it back and I go this is kind of a weird weird beat. Like is this even gonna be a useful thing or like what was I doing here? And then I pick up the guitar and I'd play with it and it, and the beat would literally pull something out of me on guitar that I would, wouldn't normally play but it works great together so I was like ah this is exactly what I wanted to happen. I wanted these loops to inspire me while I'm writing and to help make that process more fun. It was a lot of work and a lot of time. I mean, it was recording, editing, recording, editing, recording, editing, 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 so much editing. So after the editing, I did a bunch of test, check, listens, you know, with the click on. You have to actually loop it to make sure there's no clicks or pops when it loops around. So there was probably five or 10 layers of testing and making sure everything actually works the way that I want it to work. All right, so as far as the recording process, I recorded everything inside of Pro Tools and I had my template, imported all my session data of all my drum tracks, my auxes, my drum bus, my parallel bus, exactly how I wanted it to sound with all the plugins that I was using. Then what I did is I added a separate stereo track for loops to print to and to check after I made the loops. And then I had my click track. And then I also had an aux track, which I could enable just so that I could hear music from Spotify or Apple Music while I was playing to reference some of those songs that I had checked out on my playlist before. My template was all of those tracks, my master track. While I recorded, I kept all of those plugins in bypass mode or completely inactive. So I had a nice low latency while tracking because the way that I was monitoring headphones was from my Behringer PowerPlay 16, which is being sent from the Pro Tools Sends. I'm not monitoring through console, which would be like the ultimate low latency way to do it, but because of the way that I had my session laid out, I'm sending from the track. So everything I did was inside of Pro Tools. That's how I did it. I had like some plugins. Maybe I'll do another video kind of going through the plugins and the mix of everything. Also interesting on my master bus, the way that I printed all of these loops, I ran them through Mike Pre. So I did a hardware insert on my master bus where I went out into some Rupert Neve 511 Mike Pre's. And then after the Mike Pre, I went to the Warm Audio bus comp. I printed it out of that through a Pro L2 limiter back in, and that's the loop chain as far as the master 
bus. And then as far as the tracking and editing process, what I would do is I basically playlisted everything, which was crazy when I got to the loops because I kept the original one and then I would keep the edit before I committed it. I had, there was something like six or 700 playlists on my Pro Tools session and uh, Pro Tools was sweating. It was something like, you know, because of the timeline of all of the loops at all of the tempos and all of the different patterns and groups of things that I did, all of those being duplicated six over six, 700 times. I've never done that with a session. It was crazy. That's, that's how I went about it with Pro Tools. And then I mixed it and I printed it back through my master bus chain into Pro Tools. So I could actually check and see the loops on the grid and play the final loop that was printed through the chain back before I export it and then I would name them in Pro Tools and export them, which is the last part of the process. Basically taking the loops, the samples, the one shots that you've made, taking them out of your DAW after you've thoroughly checked them, troubleshot everything, done all of the testing you could possibly do, you know they're perfect exporting them and then organizing them into a folder structure that actually makes sense to the user. It was a lot, but it was worth it because, um, you know, it's cool to have something that you've made, especially when it's something you're a drummer and I'm an audio engineer. And it's like the most useful thing for me. And especially as someone who wants to, you know, write more and produce more, these are things that are gonna be very useful to me. And that was the name of the game, was make something as useful as possible. That sounds, one, fantastic, but two, sounds like the style and like the sonic, like just everything how you want it to sound or how I expect a studio kit to sound. So that's how I did it. It took well over two months, hours and hours every single day, seven days, hours, seven days a week. So you can do it. It's not impossible. Hopefully this was useful to you. If you have any other questions, I think I've covered most of the ground. So, you know, so much of it was just the time in those details, but those are literally all the steps that I took. It was a lot of just very slow, steady, making sure to get every single part right and consistent. I'm very proud of it and I hope you guys like it. Please, if you wanna check it out, I would be so happy to hear what you think. And also please use it and send me some of the tracks. Some of you guys have already sent me tracks that you've made with them. Literally, there was one guy who sent me a track he made using the loops like an hour after he bought it. I was like, whoa, this is so cool. So send it to me, I'll share it. You guys are so creative in so many different ways than I am. Hearing somebody else's way of using something that I made is like amazing. All right, so I finally done it. Drum roll, I picked the three random people who bought the drum sample pack in the very first week to win the Sweetwater giveaway. Number one, Kevin Haynes. Kevin, if you're watching this, check your email. Number two, Aaron Stanilis. Aaron, I'm sorry if I'm messing up your last name. Aaron Stanilis, I think that's right. Number three, Don Kennedy. The three of you have won the Sweetwater giveaway. I will email you the details on getting your gear. So keep an eye out. Everyone else, thank you guys so much for everything, for watching this video. Make a drum pack. If you wanna make a drum pack, do it. I did it. And that says a lot. Now, if you don't wanna make one, just go ahead and pick up the studio kit for 35 bucks down in the description. It's been a ton of fun. I'm like such a geek on this kind of stuff. Kind of a niche thing to talk about, but you know, recording drums, it's just like so awesome. So if you're with it, hit the like button, subscribe, all that stuff. Thank you Sweetwater for doing this giveaway, for supporting this channel, for hooking you guys up with free gear. And as a little spot, I'm gonna shout out something that I use literally every time I play my drums. And that is, Pro Mark Hickory drumsticks. Now specifically, I like the Hickory 5Bs. I have used these forever. Pro Mark makes some amazing stuff. I actually just got all these fresh, but I've had and have used and beaten the crap out of mine. These hot rods are so fun and they have such a cool sound. They've got all these cool, like this thing. What is this, Sage? You can play, they're called broomsticks. But all of this stuff, Sounds so cool. They make really high quality brushes, sticks, the whole nine yards. I'm sure you guys already are familiar with Promark, but this, this is the stick company that I personally like to use and my deal with Sweetwater is I get to shout out gear that I like, not just like whatever 
gear is new and you know what coming down the pipeline i pick the stuff that i actually like so yeah if you want to pick up some new sticks some fresh sticks to use with your drum sample pack <laughs> links down in the description thank you guys i'll see you in the next one Shoo.